Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex, and that's not the bottle we need. No. Where is the bottle? Where is the bottle? Well, the bottle we're going to start with is a weird one. But it's a gift from Ryan Butler, patron saint of whiskey. Ryan Butler, your patron saint of whiskey. So remember when your dad gave me crap that, hey, Rick's the spinning doesn't do anything. <laughs> like, I know, I know, but you know what I'm thinking? Huh? The Doppler effect is a real thing. Okay. So if we ding it and I just start swinging it around. The wah, 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 wah. <laughs> no, but this. I know, it I know, you freaking glass. Whittington's. You, Sweet. I know. Sweet I glass. Know. <laughs> it's not the bottle, it's the glass, I know. Actually, that doesn't. There's your dot. No, no, do it against your ear. Wait, one at a time. I'm gonna do it right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Alberta Whiskey Friday. All right, this is weird. Yes. Because it starts with something that you might think, well, that's fine. It's whiskey, but it's not because the base um, grain in this is not a grain. It's buckwheat. But it's wheat. No, it's not. Buckwheat is not wheat. It's wheat. Which is why this is considered a distilled spirit specialty. Okay, what is buckwheat? So buckwheat is... Wheat. <coughs> right. It's not a wheat or a grass, actually. It's closer to... A wheat. Like rhubarb. Oh. Than it is to... Really? An actual grain. Huh. Right? I, I guess I've never actually seen buckwheat. So it's it's considered a pseudo cereal, which means it mimics some of the use of cereals due to things, yeah. but it's not an actual cereal yeah. at having to do with complex carbohydrates and like that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, this is grain 20%, buckwheat 80%. Okay. Right? And this is from Catskills Distillery, which is in New York. Yes. And uh, I kind of... Did I think you, this is cool. Did you notice the cloudiness? Though? Yeah. So, obviously cloudy. no chill filtration. Very cloudy. And proof down to 42.5 <laughs> with no filtration, which means we've got some suspended uh, compound things. Whoa. What is going on here? That's a very different nose. It's almost like it's not a whiskey. You know what it's reminding me of? Sunflower seeds. There's a bit of that. Like the sh already shelled ones. Mm -hmm. Like not the ones you eat while you're like cracking them. Just and the smell up. of Just the sunflower. straight up pile yeah. of sunflower seeds. dried sunflower seeds. Yeah. Yeah. There's a bit of that for sure. And it is a dry nose. Very dry. Yeah. I wonder how old. Did they actually say There's how old it is? almost like a, a dusty quality. Which tracks with the sunflower seeds. You get like the, the, the dust from it. Right. Okay, now, I, okay, yeah, I'm like excited a, like, to try this. Slightly grassy, maybe slightly grassy. Oh, weird. It tastes like the vanilla candy version of sunflower seeds. And there's like a, there's like a, a bit of a bitter element. Yeah. That I want to attribute to the barrel. Yeah, it's got to be the barrel, but... But it's it's like the seeds of something. Like, this is really bizarre. This is like if you candy glazed. You know how you get those walnuts that are like sugar glazed walnuts? Yeah. And if you candy glazed sunflower seeds. With and then added vanilla ice cream. And, and a bit of a grassy note. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then there's like this, um, like a barrel. Ah, so weird. Like a barrel bitter element that takes you, takes you across the finish line. Yeah. I like that experience. I'm totally unique. I don't like... I wouldn't drink that regularly. It's it's not my thing. It's it's funky for sure. Yes, and not flavor of funk, but just weird. And weird and unexpected. Offbeat. offbeat. It's I don't find any faults in it. Nothing's wrong with it. Uh, it's just not whiskey. It, it's not whiskey, and also I think it really for me is very subjective territory here. For me, it's a little too dry. Yeah, there's too many dry things stacked on top of each other. And the vanilla candy thing on the taste, mm -hmm. it's like it's there. But it's but a the, veneer. Yeah, the dominance is this dry note. So this is Black Feather. 
Cheers. Which is a gift from William Shepard, the Titan of Whiskey. He's now up to like over 30. Today on the distance, you hear that? Yes, it's been blowing. Yeah. Cheers. You magnificent bastards. Like, look, someday we're going to have to, like, apologize to his heirs. <laughs> Say, you guys could have inherited a fortune. Yeah, unfortunately. But I drank it. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> William likes us, and it's ours now. <laughs> All your bases are belong to us. Hey, he, he, William Shepard's friends and family. He likes us better than you. Yeah, it's mostly looks. <laughs> This is Black Feather, which is uh, one of those like vanity uh, projects, okay. and and maybe that's being it too, putting it too strong. There's these dudes, Jeremy Rawl, Rob Diedrich, and Travis Pastrana, who are all like these extreme sports guys, yeah. and they do all the crazy sports. I love GoPro videos. You see those? You yeah. Know, like the GoPro advertising? Yeah, yeah. They have like no. extreme sports. I think the most recent one I saw was... Go ahead. My favorite is downhill mountain biking. Oh, that's cool. From the perspective of the bike. Then you got like the guys in the wingsuits. Yep. They're like 15 feet above yeah. the ground, going down the side of a mountain the whole way. And then there's like a crevasse. There's like a hole in the rock. And then they just, and they go through the hole and they don't splatter and die. I, of course, they don't show the ones that splatter and die. Yeah. Cause, yeah. So you, I can't believe they always make it. No, they don't. They don't always <laughs> make it. They don't always make it. So this is Eleanor. Okay. It's the same MGP we release. At roughly the same age. I would it's like two to three year old Eleanor. I would not have guessed that. Because ours ages in Texas and it changes everything. But you should be able to recognize its cousin. Right? It's all there. Ellen it's all the Eleanor notes are all there. Uh this has got to be proofed down a little bit too. What are we talking? 43, yeah. Four okay. We don't ever proof ours down, so right. that's part of it. All right. Now my frustration is only that. I don't have a problem with vanity branded whiskeys at all. Is it just a, if they taste good? Is it a lack of transparency thing? Then hell yeah, bring it on. No, it's just a vaguely marketing. This is one of those things where some marketing guys thought they they should say some things, and it's the wrong direction. It's okay. like guys just own this because right. they're saying things like this is the website. We build a craft product that you don't have to work to drink, and by craft we mean like the biggest sourcing distillery in the entire. Well, are they doing US. Any, Are they doing anything? To that? No. So, They're just blending together some two and three year old MGP. So that's <laughs> right. And it says it starts big with an 86 proof kick. It's like, but that's proofed down. That's not a. It's really low. It's really low. Yeah. And then rewards you with an easygoing finish. Yeah, because it's fucking good MGP. Because MGP makes really good whiskey. That's Eleanor without the Texas mid palate. Well, and it's softened, it's proofed down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, it's just a nice MGP. I was getting something before I dug in on the taste. I was getting a, a moment of something on the nose. And then... Yeah, and I wanted to say it was almost some type of candy, like a, maybe a licorice note or something. Right. But it's not on the taste. So then they say, um, this is for all levels of whiskey drinking, from aficionados... Meh. To explorers. Well, I mean, if you haven't had Redemption yet, or any other MGP... Right. 721 rye bourbon right. and new bloods okay maybe yes mm -hmm. maybe if you're introducing people to whiskey yeah this is good damn good mgp two to three year old herbal slightly sweet brown, forward brown low sugar. tannin brown sugar just a balance of not a lot of nice classic, classic flavors yeah mm -hmm. balance a lot of uh, classic flavors i don't know the thing that only irks me about that is and I know there's no uh, legal requirement to use the word craft. Yeah. <laughs> but MGP <laughs> is like, not craft. If, if what we understand to be accurate is in fact accurate, it's like the most uncrafty thing in the world, not that craft has any type of specific criteria. It really doesn't. It's, it's what is it that it was the... Um, but the whiskey It itself. was a congressional thing. I don't know what porn is, but, but you know, I, no but you know it when you see it. Yeah. Uh, it's the, like, I don't know, I can define craft, but I can tell you when I see it. But all... Minor annoyances aside from the labeling and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the whiskey itself, you've had it before. Totally good. It's a nice whiskey, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is interesting. 
I, damn it, that thing tore off. I have to knife this thing again. This is a gift from Magnificent Bastards, Robert McGrath and Joe Malcolm. Robert McGrath and Joe Malcolm, you Magnificent Bastards. At one point, Robert McGrath tried to leave Joe behind and send in some bottles oh. with only his name. Oh, that's, ooh. I'm just not gonna let it happen, Robert. Uh, We're adding Jill into all of those ones you sent in. You guys are fact, together. I, I think we need to sideline Robert. That much, yeah. So Jill can catch up. Look. And as a penalty, I think she needs to get a couple steps ahead. I think she's patron saint now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jill Malcolm, you I don't, right? <laughs> We can't get it. Yeah, <laughs> no, so here's the thing, Robert. You can keep watching, but only if Jill's watching. Jill, you can watch whenever you want. <laughs> and then uh, Malcolm, go ahead and leave the room. Yeah. Uh, Jill, is she gone yet? You can do better. <laughs> I really hope nothing goes wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right. Okay, so this is Smoky Quartz uh, Distillery, which are uh, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. Seabrook, New Hampshire Distillery. Um, they're doing bourbon. Mm -hmm. This is 100% corn. Oh. But but bourbon, which means new oak, right? Okay. But they're using 15 gallon barrels. Okay. And this one is specifically 15 months old. I get a nice dusty granola. Yeah. Yeah. But good, not like granola as a fault. No, no, no. I I, I like the granola note, but this is a nice uh, honey and granola mixture here. It's not going to be proof. Super high. We're 45. Be, 45. Yeah. 90 proof. It's a whole, it's another veteran owned. They talk a lot about veteran owned, actually, everything veteran contributed. This is slightly higher in proof than I was expecting. The nose is uh, really easy. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of like pokingness. This is really interesting. This shows you how much the flavor of corn whiskey is dependent on used oak. Mm. Uh, because this is effectively corn whiskey, which mm -hmm. only has to be 80% plus corn, right? I really like the nose. But new oak makes it bourbon. Now, so I, I'm going back, I'm acclimating to some of the notes. I'm starting to get like a vanilla yeah. creeping out of here. Absolutely. Dude, for 15 months. Ooh, I like that. That's pure dessert. Wait. That is vanilla cream frosting with the yellow cake. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yellow cake. Yeah. Right? Yeah, man. Um, oh. This I want to make a yellow cake. I haven't had yellow cake in a while. Yellow sheet cake. Um, did you say fifteen months? You did. You said fifteen months. Fifteen months and fifteen gallon barrels. Uh, so small barrels. Third of the size of a normal barrel. Okay. Right. So small barrels. Fifteen months. The youngness is not nearly as apparent as you would think. Right. You can find it, but the flavors that are coming out of here are really nice flavors. Right. Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, that's matured to a point after 15 freaking months that you can find some really nice notes. In no, it. that was the right choice to bottle this. Mm -hmm. uh, for a craft who needs to like keep things moving and let people try things, this was the right call. This is a good whiskey. Uh, a really good whiskey. The 2019 distillation year, batch 13, bottle 336. I think you find the lack of age getting towards the finish. Yeah, it sort of drops off a cliff. Um, but not in a but not in a disappointing way. It's just like I want another sip of that. I, well, I want to go back. I think it stay it, at least for me. It stays with me a bit. But usually things that are aged longer, you have a little bit longer of a journey before you get to that finish. Right. This is just hey, nice flavors. Get you somewhere you know interesting, um, and then you know it doesn't do anything much after that. And with age, I think it'll probably end up doing more. But with the smaller barrels, you got to keep an eye on making sure it doesn't get overly oaked. So, Which the is next, not, this is not overly oaked. This is nice. The next and last whiskey for today Jeez. is Watershed Bourbon. I, I kind of want to keep going. I know, right? Hold on to that. Watershed Bourbon. Yeah. Uh, finished in apple brandy barrels. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, apple brandy would just be an apple distilled spirit aged in barrels. Sure. Right? Sure. Um, this is from Team Watershed. The distillery sent this to us, so like as a group. So they, so their reps have a they have a vested interest, a financial interest in the success of this whiskey. Which makes it a little awkward. It's weird. Um, just uh, what we do is 
to honor this type of donation, do some simple crickets. Okay. <laughs> So if you want to know more about this, Allison Bowers yeah. is the one who is in charge of sending this to us. 119 proof. Her email is Ooh. Allison at... <laughs> her home address is 1286... Let's, let's text yeah. her now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is... So uh, this is Ohio. Yeah, 119 proof. Okay. Oh, almost under And this is them celebrating their 10th anniversary. Okay. Which is... Dude, when a craft guy makes it 10 years, you're doing sh right. Well that done. Is this cask at 119 this is the first time they've ever released a uh high proof barrel release okay six years old oh, bourbon yeah. Yeah, yeah then finished in apple brandy that sounds very interesting i'm very excited to get on this uh on this nose here here we go okay Ooh. that proof does not does not show up in the nose it's mild yeah i think I'm, i think the age may have rounded off any kind of a sharpness at least on the nose so far i'm having a hard time finding the apple brandy so i wonder if in brandy all the wood notes contribute mm -hmm. right and so i wonder if the wood notes in the apple brandy are blending with the wood notes in the whiskey to obscure a lot of the apple in the nose do you know how long something has to be aged in wood to be considered brandy i don't it's two i don't years. know anything about brandy two years it where everywhere i'm including I'm, america i'm 52 percent sure of that number <laughs> two years we need to call the licorices. They're making brandy and they're brandy, serious brandy snobs. Two years. I have no idea. You know how, you know how I know that, maybe? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> how? Google? Uh, no, we're doing the durian fruit distillation. Right. right. It's like, is this categorized as anything? If you put it in a barrel, it'll be brandy. In two years. Maybe. <laughs> two years? Maybe? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I don't. Okay, coming back to the nose. It's not my job to pay attention to numbers. The nose goes back into the wood varnish yeah. note, but there's these really candied notes that I can't define as any specific fruit, and I can't even call it apple on the nose. This, right now, I'm not finding apple brandy. I'm no. finding really nice bourbon. I'm finding... Like some, really heavy honey. I'm uh, matured the flavors. At six years, they've had enough time to develop. And so far on the nose, I'm not expecting anything wildly... Outside the lines of these, these traditional bourbon notes that you come to expect. If you're going into this finding apple, it's because you're looking for apple. It's because you knew it was involved. I'm getting um, black tea and honey. Yeah, I'm still not getting a dominant fruit note. I'm getting a bready note, right? Like a pastry. Okay. Yeah, black but, tea, honey, But I couldn't pastry. really tie it down to a specific fruit pastry. Black tea, honey, pastry, and... Ooh, that's really good. Antique wood. Antique wood with fruit, like, you know those fruit pies that are like in a pocket? Mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah. Like a little pocket pastry with a fruit filling. That's what I'm getting. And I could totally see it being an apple pie pocket pastry. The thing that shows up on the taste, which I wasn't expecting um, from the nose, it's that antique store wood. That yeah, it's not, dom the wood nose is not there on the nose as dominant. Shows up, that's the first thing I get on the taste. And then the sweetness, like the sweetened tea, the tea carries through the nose into the taste. Oh, then it does turn into this like slightly tangy juice note in the middle of the finish. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And then it's, See, like a, it's like a spicy brown sugar for me on the end. This is why I'm a fan of experimental finishes. I think the, the proof makes that brown sugar note a spicy brown sugar note. Yeah. It's kind of like you'll have like a mango, cayenne, pepper type of thing. Those flavors aren't in here, but that combination of spicy and sweetness. Right. It's nice. There is like that spicy brown sugar for me on the finish at this proof, which if is I really nice. If I had one word for this, and I, I like it. So yeah. let me go on record saying I like this. Yeah, I like it too. Balanced. It is. This is so balanced. It's balanced, which is weird for me to say because I was not expecting the antique store, mm -mm. Um, antique wood, right at that first moment, but it doesn't just stay there. That's the first flush, and then it unfolds into these other notes. Coming back, I get that Pier 1 potpourri note. The Pier 1 potpourri note? You're getting the pure one, you're getting the wicker. Yeah, yeah, with those little vases that have the sticks of leaves See, sticking out of them. What I'm trying to do, I'm just trying to start a new thing. You're the instead spread of, leg? Instead of this, like this. And the spread leg leans back. And then he's like this. 
You in the woodpecker? This is gonna be my new thing. <laughs> no, you it's Dan's. You can't take it. No, this. no, no, no. That's Dan's. I invented that. You know you didn't invent that. Fancy Dan's been doing that. I invented it. Fancy Dan, he's taking your thing. He's taking your Show him how to do it right now. Show him how to do it right now. Show him, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. I've been getting money, I've been getting go. Uh, so, I mean, damn. So Was on today's that's it. Okay. On today's Friday, I am back and forth between. You know what? what the the special little surprise hit for me. Mm hmm. The smoky quartz. The fifteen month jam that caught me a little off guard. I actually really like that. Yeah. 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 yeah! You're fighting Stanley and drink. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. Steal me, steal you, Lindsay. If you drink, may you drink with us. Maybe that's why he didn't get it because I wasn't recording. Just now? Uh, did you? <laughs> it's just fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the final Lord. Are you? Are you? Don't worry about it. Are you? Don't worry about it. Why are you worried? <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Justin Chester. Justin Chester, who I know and you know, it's a good man. Well, also, final Lord. Yeah.